the humble digital versatile disc has been around for many generations now, at least 20 to 30 odd years. This technology debuted in the 90s, and it is still one of the biggest sellers of physical media, even today in 2024. Why does it have such a staying power? And why do people keep going back to DVD? It just doesn't make sense that in a modern age that people would draw towards DVD. And while streaming is the biggest winner at the moment, it is the biggest moneymaker. It is not going to be a factor of DVD are outperforming streaming. But when people look at physical media, a lot tend to go towards DVD. And it's because it's so readily available and so cheap at the moment. I mean, you might say, okay, I'll get Roger Rabbit on 4K. You might get Roger Rabbit on 4K for 20 bucks. And that's okay. Like, for what you're getting, it's a 4K disc. You might even get a Blu-ray like, uh, what's the movie here? Like Hollow Man. You could get a movie like that for a couple of bucks, maybe six bucks. You can get a movie like that for six bucks on Blu-ray. But if we're talking DVD, you can get something like, I don't know, what's something here? Kung Fu Hustle. You could probably get that for a few cents. The cover's not great, because it was pre-owned, but you could get so many different things, like the original um, Grudge, you know, this is Juan, um I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this is the Grudge, Japanese version of the Grudge. It is really interesting to see movies like this available so cheap, and while it's not going to have the same impact as a Blu-ray or a 4K in terms of video quality, you can still watch the movies that may not be on digital. I don't know if you can find that on digital, the original Grudge. But so many people can't see the difference between DVD, Blu-ray, let alone Blu-ray and 4K. And that is why it has such staying power, as well as being so accessible. I mean, there are stores I go to where I can buy DVDs for basically a bag full for a couple of dollars. Now, given there are stores that I'm having a bit of a standoff at the moment, one of which is being the Salvos, the way that's marketed is kind of misleading, where they tell you, it's kind of marketed like Goodwill in America, where come in, fill a bag, take some DVDs, it helps us out, it all goes to charity at the end of the day. But then I had an instance the other day where I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to go buy that, and it's also helping support charity, it's going to help support people in need. And then you get to the counter and they're like, oh, you can't buy that one. You can't buy that one. That's got a sticker. No, that's worth more money. No. And I'm like, dude, bad vibes. Like, <laughs> I don't want to buy here. But, you know, most people, most corporations around the world are like, DVD, a lot of people are donating the DVDs. For the people still buying them, most people will meet you halfway. Most like CEX, even JB Hi-Fi have really lowered DVDs to the point where you can get a brand new DVD. Like, I think I'd probably pay 15 for this one. But, you know, you can probably get a brand new DVD from JB for about five. Like, they're pretty cheap. And on the second-hand market, as I said, CEX are a really good shop. The Salvos, to the most part, are really good as well. I mean, there are stores that I'm having to stand off with, but that's not all stores. Sal Salvos still help a lot of people. Vinnie's as well in Australia. They're kind of like the Goodwills, where you can go and fill bags, and they'll pretty much work with you. But... That's what I mean. So many people can get into the DVD format for such a cheap price compared to DVD, uh, compared to Blu-ray or 4K. Like, oh, and you have access to movies that just aren't on Blu-ray in Australia. Like, Dangerous Minds is not on Blu-ray in Australia. That may be a different case over in America or, you know, different parts of the world. But as far as I know, this was not released on Blu-ray in Australia. I can't find a Blu-ray of that. And Blu-rays, even if it was on Blu-ray, I can't find it. So, access to movies you love... DVD was the big format for so many decades. The video shops carried a lot of this. And while Blu-ray Blu -ray caught on, but it never took off like DVD. DVD was in the PlayStation 2, and every PlayStation 2 in every house had a DVD player. That's a 150 million DVD players in houses. It's not the same as Blu-ray where, yes, it was in the PS3, but it wasn't the same as like everyone had it. It was like the big format. Yes, it was the next thing, but it could play DVDs, you know? It, was, it wasn't like, hey, put a VHS in your PlayStation and play it that way. It was a big technology at the time. It was a big revolution in home video. And it was a transformation from the previous optical disc format, which was Laserdisc. So when I look at my 
humble DVD collection because people have wanted me to show it for a while. Yes, there's stuff in here that I wouldn't necessarily think is great. But then I've got stuff like the Godzilla movies. I've got all the Godzillas, or most of them. I don't think it's all of them. On DVD. I can't find all of these on Blu-ray. And I'm sure Criterion's done something. I've got the Criterion book of the first uh, Showa classics. But, you know, there's certain things in here that I just can't get on Blu-ray. And that is why I keep some around. Like, as I said in a previous video, the 4x3 full screen releases of things like The Mask just aren't on Blu-ray. And yes, while the 16x9 aspect ratio might be better for that movie as it was seen in cinemas, seeing that bit of extra detail at the top and bottom is a little extra bonus. There's also these little DVD features that you just can't get on that wasn't ported over to Blu-ray. Like, I remember there were special features on Harry Potter that I think were in the VHS copy that just wasn't ported over. And that's just kept on. There's also, like, Laserdisc fans will tell you, hey, DTS Jurassic Park was not ported over. There are so many reasons why DVD is still such a humble format in 2024. A, it's cheap. B, it's got just about every title you can think of known to man available. And... You can pretty much get all your favorites for maybe a hundred dollars, like being outside of like the big, like hard to find track down collector's ones. You could get basically most of your favorites for probably a hundred. And that's if you've got a few dozen that you want to pick up, like the Titanics, the Jurassic Parks. You could probably get Jurassic Park for 50 cents, 50 cents at like places like CEX and the Salvos. But when I look at this, I'm like, yes, there's a reason why this is still around. I mean, I've got IMAX, IMAX movies up here. You don't see stuff like this on formats like uh, Blu-ray and 4K. I would absolutely love a IMAX certified Blu-ray 4K line. I would pick those things up in an instance if they were certified for with IMAX and had the IMAX countdown opening it. I would buy it in an instant. But, you know, this is still a pretty good thing. It's got the, ice the IMAX uh, aspect ratio, I believe. And it's certified by IMAX, so it's like, it's as seen on TV. Take that with a grain of salt. But, you know, there's little things in here that I'm like, yes, I need to retain it. Also, the little humble thing of like, the old video shop days, that's got DTS in it too. Obviously, DTS is an older technology sound before um, THX and all that took off. And it's also got the Video Easy logo on it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, if you're ever wondering why... DVD is still around. It's because it's so accessible. It's so readily available. It is everywhere. And it is so cheap to get in. If you're starting your collection, I've recommended in more than a few videos, start with DVD and work your way up. If you decide, hey, DVD is not cutting it for me, I might go to the Blu-ray version. And for my certain movies that I think like Jurassic Park or like a Jaws or a Titanic, Blu-ray might be the way to go. But there's no way to say, hey, Titanic on DVD is nothing to laugh at. Like, it is still the movie. It is still going to play perfectly as long as you've maintained the disc and it's not scratched. And this is an alternate cut of what is out there at the moment. This is the original theatrical version. Cameron in 2012 changed a lot of aspects of this movie, including the um, when Kate Winslet's on the door singing Come Josephine on my flying machine. The sky was changed in that theme. And that version I just showed you maintains the original. I've also got little cool things like, I don't know what this is. It's like a compilation of like horror movies. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to add that to my collection. That's pretty cool. And even little things like, um, Calamari Wrestle is a pretty good, um, pretty good DVD. That's a really good movie. Uh, weird Japanese movie about like a wrestler who's died and comes back as a I think an octopus or a squid or something interesting movie and also as I just showed Pirates of Silicon Valley the best depiction of Steve Jobs on film and yes it's um it's played by Noah Wiley Steve Jobs but um Steve Wozniak has even said hey this is the best depiction of Steve Jobs on film and also Steve Jobs even had the little inside joke of having Noah Wiley come out on stage at, I think, Mac World 98 to parody him in front of Steve Jobs. 
So yeah, all these little things make up a great format, and this is why I keep it around. Yes, it's not Blu-ray. Yes, it's a lower quality than Blu-ray. Yes, it's going to be a bit more tedious of like, hey, you're not getting the best quality. But most people will agree. Streaming, for the most part, is the winner. And you might just want to watch Big Mama's House and have it around in case the internet goes down. That's why you'll keep it around. But yeah, let me know what you think. Do you love DVD still? Tell me what you think in the comments, guys. Get back to you in the next one. Peace.